Today we're just going to run through a few questions about racing extinction and your sort of process along the way. So what was the, the moment that you thought before making the film that you needed to make something like this, uh, you know, to share to everyone and tell them what was happening? Oh boy. Well, you know, I started out as a still photographer for National Geographic magazine, and I had done four stories for them on the Mesozoic. That's the midlife of the planet. So a lot of my friends were paleontologists. And uh, I was at Sundance with the Cove, where there's a, the premiere screening, and I had brought two books with me. One of them was by Michael Novacek from the American Museum of Natural History. I'd been digging up dinosaurs with him in the Gobi Desert. Um, several years before for the, one of those National Geographic stories. And he wrote a book called uh, Terra. And in the book, he was talking about how right now we're losing species faster than mankind's ability to record that they're even on the planet with us. And I thought, oh, that's so depressing. I don't want to read that just now. So the only other book I brought with me was uh, a book by uh, Charlie Verone, uh, the former chief marine scientist for Australia. It was a book called A Reef in Time. And in that book, he's talking about how we're losing the, the coral reefs right now because of acidification. And that's always what goes on before every mass extinction event in history. And I thought, this is the biggest story in the world. And I didn't know about it. You know, and I, I wrote a book on paleontology called Hunting Dinosaurs. So I thought, you know, extinction was always on the forefront of my memory. And um, it was right then, I, I believe, at, at Sundance, I thought, I got to make a, make a film about this. And I knew it would be tough because... It's a big story, and it, there's, it's not just, unlike the cove, it's not just sort of one cause. Uh, it's, um, it's multiple factors, and I wanted to make a film that would not just a, uh, it's interesting, there's a little partridge going by here with a bunch of chicks yeah. on the yard. <laughs> um, and I wanted to make a, a film that would um, inspire people to, to help save animals. And I thought it was, the, you know, this is, it's the biggest story in the world, bar none. There's, there's no more important story out there. I mean, you can say, well, there's, look at the war in Syria and all that. And that's, that's true. But, you know, my friends in paleontology that have a, a grasp of the big story, like, you know, like the big overarching story, they say that, you know, at the end of the century, World War II will be a footnote compared to what's going on right now. And I believe that. I, I believe when you look at, you know, what we're doing, you know, this epoch right now that's before us, it's called the Anthropocene, the age of man. It's the, you know, those are the, the things that people remember. You know, 100 years from now, people aren't going to go, look, at they were killing each other. You know, it wasn't, wasn't that awful. They're going to be looking. They were killing off the whole planet, and they knew it. You know, there's no, you know, coral reefs will, you know, this at the trajectory that we're on right now, coral reefs will just be a memory of, you know, or be in documentaries or textbooks. Um, so the big story is the Anthropocene, and the big problem is how do we fix it? And unfortunately, you know, on, on, you know, when you embrace all the solutions, they're all upgrades. You know, everything that we can do to help save the planet, you know, the people that are invested in the old technologies that say, oh, well, you can't change it overnight, it'll, it'll destroy the world, we, you know, that's not the way things work. The reality is we're going that direction anyway. We're, you know, we're, the world's going towards electric cars. The world's headed towards a, a meatless society. I know that sounds really strange to some people, but, you know, there's going to be a day when I think eating meat is going to be like smoking on planes. You know, it's going to be like people are going to be like, I can't believe we did that. We were such fools. Um, the, uh, the idea of making a documentary is just to speed it up. It's not to say, you know... Um, you know, with, I'm, uh, I'm at uh, Skywalker Ranch right now. This is where they make a lot of big Hollywood movies. In fact, well, I can't even talk about the ones that they're making around here. But, you know, the most Hollywood movies are like, you know, they're just, they just talk about, they want butts and seats. You know, the audience is $10 in a box of popcorn. When we make movies, when we make documentaries, the idea is, you know, you still have to, you know, get $10 in a, in a box of popcorn so theaters can try to make some money. But we have a, there's another barometer and that's that when people come out of the theater you, you want to have them changed so not only do we have to entertain and you know hit the hit numbers you have to motivate people or inspire them to, to create change that's our barometer i think your your documentary definitely does when i first watched it like it took me on a sort of roller coaster of emotions i cried 
um, and then you know it does inspire you to want to do more than you can anyway and I do um, I'm a vegan and then I try to sort of promote that kind of lifestyle from my blog and stuff um, and all about you know like blackfish and everything as well because that as soon as I watched that I was inspired so the next day I like got talking to Jeffrey on Twitter Jeffrey Venturi and then it just went from there so your documentary definitely inspires people and as you were saying about how things are just disappearing, I remember watching uh, Mission Blue and like Dr. Sylvia Earle, she said, um, you know, she went to a part of the ocean and many years ago when she first started diving and there was so much wildlife there. There was, you know, it was just teeming with all kinds of fish and cetaceans and everything. And then she went back again and there was just nothing there. And I think that's quite, um, you know, that is is happening isn't it all over the world even now and it's going to get even worse yeah i interviewed sylvia earl for our film a few times unfortunately she didn't make it it was very very complicated but i mean i, I love sylvia but i mean she, she said to, something that to me that gives me chills i said to sylvia uh where's the best place that you've ever been in the world to dive and she said anywhere in the world 50 years ago you know, and that's, you know, I, I remember uh, there's, a, there's a friend of mine, one of my assistants, he, uh, his favorite place to dive, his father, that his father took him, uh, his father could never go there because his father remembered how good it was. And then he said that now when he goes there, his kids wants to go and he can't go back because he, he remembers how good it used to be. So every generation is adapting to this diminishment. You know, we think... You know, you, you know, see a couple of little partridges running around here, but you know, this place, you know, this is, I'm on 7,500 acres right now where it's, it's only 60 acres are developed, but you know, it's full of wildlife we have, you know, wild turkeys and, um, coyotes and it's, it's like the land before time. But there's very few places on the planet that are like that, that are, that are untouched. Even if you go to Africa. You know, these are usually fenced-in compounds. You know, when you see these wild animal parks, are really like, you know, they're just large parks, you know, with like, like large zoos. Um, not all of them, but that's what, you know, that's what nature is becoming for a lot of people. It's not even, you know, Discovery or National Geographic Channel kind of stuff. It's like we see this stuff in, in zoos and, you know, confined areas, and it's, it's not nature, you know, the way it used to be. But I think when we, I don't know, when we, when we see it, we recognize it and we want to preserve it. And that's the, but the, the problem is right now, you know, we're so, most people live, you know, we don't live rurally anymore. You know, it used to be that in America, 50% of the people lived on farms. Now it's like, you know, like I think less than a percentage. Um, people are living in cities. They're not connected to the stars. They're not connected to nature. And then, yet yeah, this is, you know, along the coast, this is where the people dictate, you know, what goes on in the rest of the world, the rest of the the country and if you're not connected to nature how can you save it you know because we're you know we're, we're on our computers we're on our cell phones we're you know we're distracted by other things that we we call life but you know i think you know we make a film you know you know mission blue blackfish this is all kind of a wake-up call for each one of us but it's all problems involved with it with the anthropocene you know that we're you know, with orcas, that we we somehow we have to we think that when we dominate this big wild creature, it's it's science or it's education. It's just a spectacle of dominance. It's nothing to do with nature. It, it if if anything, it's a it's a, it's a symbol of how sick we are as a culture when we have to take a wild whale and force it to do tricks for human amusement. You know, and I think you know all these documentaries that we're we're talking about the same thing. It's about trying to you know, realign our place in the universe and just make us take stock of who we are. You know, we're, you know, nature is, you know, we should, you know, we can dominate it, you know, but we can also, you know, dominion, having dominion over the environment is more about being a caretaker these days. And I think, you know, strength is not dominating somebody. It's really about protecting the weak. And what more noble thing could you do you know, as a filmmaker or a blogger or a spectator or whatever you're doing out there is to, to try to protect, you know, what we have left.